Let us now apply the gauss jordan elimination in solving for this given linear system. So we have the variables x, y, z, and w, and we are going to look for uh, the values, if there are exact or representations, if there are no exact uh, values for the said variables. But if you were going to check with this, this was already a part of the previous video, but that video was actually on the Gaussian elimination, where we uh, achieve a raw echelon form that was used to describe the variables or the value of the variables x, y, z, and w. For this video, we're going to apply the Gaussian elimination, which is um, additional, or there is additional process as compared to the Gaussian elimination. It includes a backward phase, which will allow us to come up with a reduced row echelon form. And with that, let me just use the row echelon form on the previous video. Uh, I don't need to be stressed with why would we will use the raw echelon form um, because um, Gaussian elimination is part of the Gaussian elimination. Okay, And um, if you are wondering about this raw echelon form, you could always look into that video, provided video earlier, or a, uh, in, in the same channel, you might want to check with the same linear system and what was the result of that. So in our previous, um, the raw echelon form was 1, negative 1, 2, negative 1, negative 1, and then 0, we have 1, negative 2, 0, 0, and 2 rows of all 0 entries. Again, if you're wondering about this, you can check that previous video. And out from this, we have noticed 2 rows with 0 entries. In short, we expect... Um, variables that are represented by arbitrary variables. In short, there are infinitely many solutions here, okay? Um, we are going to uh, place here the same, uh, the results from last time. From last time, x in that video last time is negative 1 plus t. Our y was 2s. z, it was represented by s. And w was represented by t. The reason for us sharing this is these are the results, yes, of the Gaussian elimination from last time. And if we are going to use the Gaussian elimination for the second half, inclu uh, including the backward phase, we should end up with the same results using the same arbitrary variables t for w and s for z. Because if the results are not the same, then probably our process error before using Gaussian elimination or the task that we're going to do for this video might be incorrect. They should return to the same results. And with this, there's only one step that we could add here because there's only one additional condition from row echelon form to become reduced row echelon form. By the way, this is a row echelon form for all zero rows was placed at the bottom portion in that the entries below the leading ones are all zero. The additional condition for it for this to become a, re a reduced row echelon form is that all entries on the same column having leading one, which is this, should all be zero. So we're going to come uh, make negative one as zero. And how do we do that? We will apply this row operation with the um, sum of row 2 and row 1 to become our new row 1. As simple as that. So we'll have it here. So the last two rows are still zeros. So we did not touch or we did not change the row number 2. So 0, 1, uh, negative 2, 0, 0. Sorry, my bad. My handwriting is not good. 0, 1, negative 2, 0, 0. So let's apply this one. 0 plus 1, 1. Okay. 1 plus negative 1, 0. We have achieved our goal of making this 0. So if we're going to finish this, this is already in the form of reduced row echelon format. We are not yet done. Negative 2 plus 2, 0. 0 plus negative 1, negative 1. 0 plus negative 1. We have negative 1. This is now a reduced row echelon, sorry, row echelon form. Okay? Meeting the last condition of making sure that all entries on the same column with leading one 
all of the rest would become zero. And with this, we would come up with these equations. The first row will return to x minus w, we don't have y and z, is equal to negative 1. And the second row will have y minus 2z is equal to 0. Now again, we don't have exact values for z and w, even x and y, but we can represent them with arbitrary variables. So since we used t on the Gaussian elimination in the previous video, let's also use w, uh, t for w and z for uh, s for z. With that, this will become y minus 2s equal to 0, y is equal to 2s. This is the same as the result in the previous Gaussian elimination in the previous video. Again, please check that out if you would like to. And with this value of t, this equation would become x minus t is equal to negative 1, and x would return to negative 1 plus t. Noticeably, we have the same results here. So again, this is an indication that even uh, if you will just end up with a uh, row echelon form using the Gaussian elimination, or you push further to a reduced row echelon form, using the Gaussian elimination, you will still end up with the same results. As long as you use the same okay, uh, arbitrary variables here. Because if we are going to change W as S and Z as T here, of course, uh, we'll be having different variables for X and Y. But since we use that, we have the same for this. And again, this means there are infinitely many solutions for this linear system. Thank you for watching.